Anyway, Siskel and Ebert drop. I always like these guys because they come in and, you know, we can goof on Roger's weight. And we can uh, make fun of Gene's bald head. And, and then also we can, um, <laughs> you know, we can talk Argue movies. with them about their movie picks. Because they have the worst taste in movies. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gene's pretty good. Roger sometimes is a little... Roger's <laughs> off. Roger's off. Uh, how you doing, guys? Come on in. I can't even Whenever hear you. one of us is on, you tell him that you like him and hate the other guy. I know. <laughs> I'm a big phony. You, you like him and hate the other Now when we're both on, you say you hate both of them. Oh, come on. I love you guys. Come on. Come on in. I haven't seen you in so long. Gene is at the window making lie. signs. I can't you know, understand what he's saying. And Roger's <laughs> talking and you can't hear him. because Robin's, Robin's got, a hell, of, Robin's got a hell of a book. When are you going to write a book? I want to talk to you. I wrote a book. hell with this guy. Bastard. <laughs> In fact, my second book is due out in November. Yeah, yeah, What's yeah. I heard all about it. It's about how his wife almost caught, it, caught him masturbating. It's a real long book. <laughs> it goes on and on. You bet it 400 does. pages of it. That's right. It's not a well, page actually, turner. It has yeah. it's chapter, not a page turner. Chapter 947. I will have you know. Howard, did you my that? wife it's unexpectedly. <laughs> no, it's, I'll have you know that my not, wife. Howard, did you hear that? It's not a page turner. You can put that quote on the. Thank you very much. <laughs> I will, I will use that. that. An excellent book for one arm. Gene Cisco, it's not a page turner. Actually, I boys, you said I'll use it. I expect. Boys, I have lying. worked very hard on my new book, and as a matter of fact, I like the first one. There are thank you, and the revelations will uh, astound you this time. I was a little more open this time. I try to open myself up each well, time in the right period. Give though. us a tease. What? Remember when I asked you the first scene in Fart Man? By the way, when's that film coming? By the out? way, the, the yeah, we're looking forward to that. It has to turn up on our review. I have some big movie news coming year, up. The reason why we're in our twentieth year is because we're waiting for Fart Man. Can I tell you yeah. something? First of all, in my new book, I haven't announced this yet. We're gonna yeah. You will. 40. The guy who wrote the screenplay for Fart Man. Yeah. Maybe you've heard of him, a guy named J.F. Lawton. Ever hear of him? No. No. All right. He wrote... <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, you guys that has the screenwriting things on the match. Isn't that funny? You guys are film reviewers, and you never heard of J.F. Lawton. J.F. Lawton is the man who wrote a, a small film called Pretty Woman and another small film called Under Siege. I think it would be safe like to say that both. both of those right. movies are simply recycled formula films. I think if you, want to find, nice. if you want to find the true author of either one of those films, I think you're going to have to go looking in the 30s or maybe in the 20s. Aren't you the guy who wrote Beyond the Valley of the Dolls? That was an original <laughs> film. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I rest yeah. my title. The title. Well, title. Yeah. Yeah. I rest my title. I rest my title. Where'd you ever come up with that, Rod? Yeah. I'll tell you this much. All right. Oh, all right, all right. You're going to put him Anyone listening to this show will call in and tell you Beyond the Valley of the Dolls was much more original. You still stick with it. That pretty women and yeah. under seats together. Gonna do? All, right, all right, all right. What, what am I going to do? Don't get upset. Listen to your listeners. That's a very popular film. I watch it. You watch it all the time. That's right. Look at Your wife almost caught you once when you were watching it. You don't even know what I I'm thinking. You're not, I know exactly what you're thinking. No. You did not like Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. That isn't what I was thinking. What though. were you thinking? I you missed you. Like you did miss me. Oh. You like you like that I get Roger all fired up. No. Don't you? you like that? No. Just I make you. him crazy. I yep. was actually thinking. I missed, well, I missed I you guys too. I haven't been around for a while. I haven't seen you. I like you. You know that. We should come to Chicago. Thank you. I'm going to come visit you. Listen Will you? Yeah. Listen to that. Have me over for dinner? You got it. Thank you. All right. Anyway, listen to me. Nobody's here to attack anybody, all right? Just calm down. <laughs> so in my new book... Boy, everybody just turned off this In my channel. new book... He finally said something Why funny. Why would you say something like that? In my like new that? book... No, the guy gets so defensive about Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Look, it's... Defensive. Well, you know what happened. I mean, come, well, tell him what, it, what, what did you think of it. I, 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 I thought it was critics truly what? juvenile, right. not funny, and I would have loved to prove my... Intellectual honesty by saying I liked it because people wouldn't expect me. Right. I yeah. wanted to. I thought again. I re-reviewed it for Entertainment now, Weekly. Wait a second. Okay. I re-reviewed it for Entertainment <laughs> Weekly. Yeah. L hoping that when I saw it again, you would I like would it. put aside my petty competitiveness, if you will. <laughs> right. And like the picture. I didn't like the now, picture. Now, what do you say? Roger has a good sense of humor. He didn't show it in that. What did that prove? Does that prove you've seen the movie? Right. Yes. No sense of humor, huh? So you have no sense of humor. He just doesn't get it. He <laughs> doesn't get it. How about when I like comedies? How about like Dr. Strangelove? That's funny. Uh, That's look, funny. look, look, look. This is silly. This is silly. You're accusing me of writing a movie that isn't as good as Dr. Strangelove. Oh, I can hear oh, I, oh, that's, that's a, that's a tough one. I'll, I'll say really it's not as good as Under Siege of Pretty Woman. <laughs> Just to pick two at random. <laughs> okay. Well, those were written by J.F. Lawton. I don't think uh, either one of those was picked by two major American film critics as one of the best films of the 70s. Yeah, but look at the box office gross. The public fell in love with those films. What, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls? Yes. No. no. I'm talking about Pretty Woman and Under Siege. My friend, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. How Dallas much did that gross? cost $900,000, grossed in 1970. 
55 million dollars. Wow. Really? One of the most profitable films Don't of all time. Don't you think that's so time. because people thought it was you know Valley of the Dolls? I was going to say we have to get these numbers. Not at all. No. Oh, no. 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 gross. That Robin, is true. Now, Robin has now just hit on something that is really true about <laughs> Roger. <laughs> yes. Where does he get these numbers? Out right. of variety. The all-time Roger champs. In the first year, I can guarantee you it didn't do that amount. Roger is incapable of stating a number accurately. Absolutely. They will always be exaggerated. <laughs> Robin, so did it make $55 email. million? Dollars? Do you get email from me? Uh, yes, constantly. No, no I don't get it hooked up. I don't get it. You never anything. look. You <laughs> never <laughs> look. Another fact wrong. Another <laughs> fact wrong. You never look in your account. I'll send you all the documentation. You're saying right. that you have her email address? Of course I do. Hey, can I give you mine? I didn't sure. even know. Did you send me stuff? I send you stuff. I'll email you. I email guys all the time. I love sure. that email. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll send you stuff. All right. I'll send you stuff. Okay. Hey. What you say? I got the, uh, pictures of uh, young boys. <laughs> <laughs> I got arrested three times. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll I send you stuff. I got box office grosses from Variety. That'll really And you're saying you made $55 million? dollars with that film in terms of its total worldwide gross yes in the first year is what he said in its first year of release sure <laughs> it's one of the all-time <laughs> it's one of the most you're successful so movies I know. you're amazing you're still writing of, fiction in terms of its return <laughs> on investment Really? It's, of, it's probably the so most. So you made a lot of money in that film? No, I didn't. You didn't? No, I didn't. You didn't have any percentage? No, of I didn't. I got 15 grand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. You're kidding. From 1969, that was more than I was making elsewhere. Wow, from his dear sad. friend Russ Meyer. Right. Uh, listen, I stood up for him at his wedding. I talked yeah. to Russ yesterday morning on the phone. He's still working. How's this for a movie title? I contend this is the best movie title I've ever heard. Go ahead. The Bra of God. The Bra of God is good. That's a good great. title. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I should have called my book that. You can still do it. Hey, maybe I'll do it. I'll steal it. No one's ever going to see that movie. <laughs> Hey, uh, let me tell you something. That's gonna, you know, I have big predictions for Russ Meyer. That'll be number one in the Philippines. I predict <laughs> Why not? as soon as it's released. Philippine okay. bookstores. Philippine bookstores. That's right. <laughs> Listen, guys, in my new book, I will present in comic book form so that you can visualize it as well. The first five pages of that screenplay, which I contend the is Fartman. a Fartman, so that people will finally put to rest whether or not there was a script. Now, let me tell you why the movie. I was remember never made. your first scene. You woke up in bed and you're watching TV or something. Wrong. Like that. No, wrong. You don't know anything about it. You don't know anything about it. See, How would you know the see, scene? Still writing, you're, you're still writing fiction. No, <laughs> no, I was kidding with you. This is a real script. I wouldn't tell people the script ahead of time. Now, let me tell you something. You I'm going to tell it, you then. something. Yes, there will be a Howard Stern movie. Sooner than you think. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you two... Oh, God, I can't oh, wait to get back again. Let me tell you something. And you're going to admire what I have to say. <laughs> the millennium... You guys want to bet me money that by next summer there's a Howard Stern movie? Wait a minute. The Does anybody want to bet me money? Does anyone want to bet me? Okay. So let me just keep going. The millennium... The millennium is going to give you... I'm going to give you the story. Wrong. Wrong. I'm going to give you the story now. Don't you interrupt me. Just one second. Wrong. The ego. The ego. Soon there will be... No. I said by next summer. I said by next summer. <laughs> now listen to you me. You mean in the theaters by the That's now. right. Don't tell me too far in advance. Have you started talking about you yourself think? in the third person? Listen yeah, to me. Yes, bad. I have. Oh, that's, that's right. Bad. That's, that's bad. right. Bad. That's too bad. talking about himself. I, am now, oh. I'm now, I will only refer to Howard Stern as the, in the third person now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. And I've changed my air name. You will address me as Snatch. It's a real It's a real bad sign when you start addressing yourself in the second person as we, you know, the royal we. We have been working on the film. It's only been a matter of time. We have been working on the Howard Stern film. Yeah, listen, to me. listen to me. Listen, don't you don't know everything. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The reason the Fartman movie was never made was the title. Wrong. That when I went into negotiation with New Line Cinema, this is who I was with at the time. I'm no longer with them. They wanted me to sign over all of the merchandising rights on on not only Fartman, but on Howard Stern. Now I don't merchandise anything. I don't merchandise T shirts. I don't do any of that stuff because I think it's Tacky. I think I always thought it was tacky. What kind of Johnny product? Carson never did anything classy. He never did at least a Johnny Carson t shirt. When I can, think, I can suits, think right away of a product for Fartman, it would be bubble bath for your bathtub. So of course, you think of the endless possibilities. <laughs> so they said to me, We will give you three percent of the merchandising. Three percent. And I said I, I said, I'll tell you what. I'll handle all the merchandising, I'll give you three percent. And that was the parting of the ways. Now, since that time, I sold my book, my first book to uh, Reicher, and uh, someone else has taken over the production of the film, and I am telling you, I'm not giving you all the details, there will be a private part. Do you guys film. know anything? Have you heard any rumors? No, I don't uh, want you to hear any rumors. <laughs> I don't even want to tell you. I think Robin's I, really what? I got cool. a prediction. Robin's book will be made into a film before yours. <laughs> How much you want to bet on that? How much you want to bet on I have dinner at my house. No, not dinner. 
I'm talking money. You're a big shot. You make decent bread. Come on. Not compared to the people. Ah, you know what? Now suddenly nobody puts their money where their mouth is. All right, now the big question of the morning. I have read something about his project. Yes? It was covered last week in Variety in the Whatever Happened to column. <laughs> we'll see if it doesn't do better than, uh, what is it, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls? We'll see. In, in $1970. I bet, and I guarantee you, it gets two thumbs up. Guarantee okay, it. There will be no go, denying that it'll get two thumbs up. $100, I'll bet you. Go ahead. $100, $100 high roller. Go I'll ahead. Bet yes. You that in corrected dollars. In corrected dollars. 1970 versus now. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. At first, prove to me that it made we'll $55 million. The, dollars. And we'll use the variety all time box office chart list. Yes. Right? Maybe that's mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. Rogers did. It doing. will never outgross beyond the Valley of the Dolls. Okay. You know what he did? I'll to bet get that. that $55 million? Okay. He's talking $19 corrected dollars. dollars. Yeah, corrected no, dollars. No. <laughs> No. It made twenty dollars back then, but <laughs> due to inflation, no, I think give me your email address. I'll send you documentary evidence. All right, I want to see documentary and evidence. I'll, and I'll just take a wild guess that its gross in nineteen seventy and was. In December thirty one, nineteen seventy, that its gross was around twenty five. Thank you. Million. That's a little more realistic. A little more realistic. All right. Now, see, Gene is making the mistake of taking the receipts. And not the gross. What Variety reports is the receipts. You have to at least double it to get a gross. Oh, that. Oh, Roger. That's true. <laughs> oh, That's true. Roger, you're amazing. That's true. <laughs> if you look in Variety, and Gene just realized his error, and he realized you. I have no <laughs> In Variety, if in I Variety, error, I'll come back and admit. In Variety, they probably the box down. off the receipts to the studios. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the figure that you see in that chart every week. The I know that. To the studio, you have to double it to get the growth. I know that. No, no. Let me tell you something, my friend. What is reported in Variety? That's also reported North American Reynolds. That's not even the worldwide. What is reported right. in the yeah. paper is the sales of the movies. In other words, what the ticket costs and what they made at the theater. Who cares where that movie is divided? Where that where that is divided? Well, you're up. talking. You're thinking about the Monday morning Associated Press. Let's thing. get on to something more interesting. I'm not talking about what the cost of the movie is and deducting the cost we of the movie. Been here for a year and a so half. How much Who did it gross? Just film grosses. Let's, yeah, all right, all right, all right, let's, let's get talk it. Let's your audience. Let's yeah, talk yeah, about the right. most you're important thing to discuss. What is going on with Roger's weight? Oh, what happened to the diet? What happened to the diet? I'm doing okay. Oh, come on. Admit that you are no longer on the diet. That you are not losing weight. Gene, you see me. I'm doing better right now than I was six months ago, aren't I? That's accurate. See? So then we have had lapses. The only 55 oh. million is your weight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, what happened? You were doing so well. You were eating yeah. less fat. You were on your way. You were exercising he, every day. You want to feel my muscles? No. You well, stopped You stopped exercising, didn't you? No, I didn't. I how, often, okay. how often have you gotten a yes to that question, Roger? Do you feel that he's really on a diet? Don't you think he would have lost more weight? By now, now it's been a couple he of years. He has been yo-yoing, but it's actually yo-yo, and he's on the downstroke right now. Yes, I am. What happens? You keep losing your willpower? Um, I don't do what I should do. What should you be doing? Low fat and exercise. And what are you eating? What is what is tempting you? Well, right now I'm you doing, doing okay. You were doing so good. I was so proud of you. Right now I'm doing okay. Your weight's back up, isn't it? No, not right now. What did you weigh the last time you were in here? Are we going to have a I'm not going to get on your again. phony scale again. <laughs> yes, you are. The scale again. Yeah, you, on. an extra 27 pounds. Did you not, in fact, go you up? Remember I made him get I on the scale. That. He did. I did. I called his bluff. You weren't here the last time he came on. Oh, we no. got him back on the scale again. Yeah. And he was up 15 pounds. <laughs> True or false? What was my weight the last time I was on the show? <laughs> Gary, how much, how much did Roger weigh the last time he was on the show? <laughs> Why should we ask Gary? <laughs> you might want to take off your clothes. You might want to take off your clothes. You know, it's funny that these are the numbers Rogers. <laughs> this is the numbers he adjusts. Yeah. Yeah. These, are the ones, these are the ones he's low I know. on. Exactly. Yeah. Wait a minute. High on movie I, weighed. I know what I weighed, but his phony baloney, 27 pounds off scale. Well, here's what I say. What is the difference what he my scale says? You got on the scale. You weighed 240 pounds on your fine. scale. That's fine. But the scale Very doesn't tall. lie. He's 11 feet tall. Even if the scale is off. Yeah. It's still that scale. We use the same scale oh. every time. Okay. It's going to reflect whether you go up or down. What did I weigh Can the last time? you sell that time? stuff to your children? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you tell me what I weighed the last time, and I'll bet you money whether I weigh less or more now. Gary, can you please bring in the figures? Don't please. mention them on the air. Oh, <laughs> mention them no. on the air. What is it, uh, Stuttering John? Uh, we are checking it right now. We, we do have the scale for, for Mr. Evans. Oh, of course you have the scale. There it is, the same scale. No one has touched it. <laughs> hey, Gene, yeah, Gene, I haven't seen you think you weigh less? Wait, I want Gene to do me a favor without yeah. telling us what you see. You know about what you weigh. Yeah. Get on that scale and you What do you me. weigh? He knows. Don't look at the scale. Let's let Gene do this privately. I'll tell you how accurate it is. Yeah, okay. Well, 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 why can't you say what you weigh? It's none of your business. No, no, what do you weigh? It's meaningless. It's meaningless. Is it accurate? Don't forget you're wearing shoes and... Yeah, it's uh, about five pounds heavy. Oh! 
<laughs> because you're wearing <laughs> shoes and socks. Okay, it's about five pounds. He heavy. just took his shoes right, did off. You hear what he, did you take his shoes off? I took my shoes off, but it's about five pounds heavy. Okay, fine. It adds five pounds to you. Give him five. I'll give we'll you give five. five. I'll spot you five pounds. Okay. And now the question is whether I weigh more or less today. Than you did the last. Yeah, if I no, weigh less. Wait a second, though. If you're going by the same scale, what's the difference that it's five pounds heavier? Okay, then let's find out. Well, fine. Whatever the scale said before, yeah. how much are you going to pay me if I weigh less today? If you weigh less? Yes. I'll pay you $100. Okay. And how much will you pay me if you weigh more? I'll wait until I find out what he says. Oh, I'm oh, oh, you're a rich man. You're a very yeah, I mean, rich man. My God, $55 <laughs> million dollar gross. Yeah, but, yeah, you're Look at this guy. Man. Look at I'll this bet, guy. I'll pay you $100. Okay. okay. All right. $100 bet. Yes. Now yeah. let's get... Where's the statistics? Where's my money? Here, I'll get, get my the money, money out. Get the money out. Yeah, I got a... God, Howard. I got They're a all wrapped in... Ten thousand dollars. Yeah, wait a second. I got money. Look, look what I got here. He's got three dollars and twelve cents. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, look, 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 here's a hundred bucks. Look at that. Yeah. What is that? Does anybody see that? Yeah. Let me see. Okay, Reach in that, really look at that while it has cubs. Right there. Where's your hundred bucks? Right there. there what is. is that? That's a hundred dollars. No, it's not. What is that? It's it's, it's Polish money. No, it isn't. It's Canadian money. Okay. Dollars. What's wrong with that? Oh, right. come on. Do you have listeners in Canada? Come on. You want to do a hundred dollar bet or not? There it is. Here's a hundred dollars. I'll put it right up on here. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. his yeah. lackey in there is adding forty pounds to mine. <laughs> no. Or subtracting. Let's get it over with. Let's get it over with. Come on. We got. Let's go. We haven't gotten there. You knew I was looking that wallet for a week, and you didn't have these figures already and lined up. My God. You think we prepare this? Show? <laughs> I forgot. Last time we said, didn't he say he just lost forty pounds? Is yeah. that why we wait a minute? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He hasn't lost a thing. He's gained. Uh huh. Because he's eating fries. I know what you're eating. Uh, fries, fries and roast beef au jus. Uh -huh. Right? <laughs> oh, <shoot. laughs> yeah, right? Okay. No, he doesn't like roast beef au jus. What does he eat? What do you, you must see him eat? Pizza. Is that it? I love pizza. Uh, Gene I, I, and I were in Toronto last week. We ate nine pizzas. I love pizza. pizza. You're never going to lose weight eating pizza. I know. Pizza. With the cheese? And, oh, and so very light. Very light. Very light. Oh, very light. Very light. Very yeah. Light very, on the cheese. You know, you can, you can do that. What happened? You were doing great. I mean, there was one point you were really... No, there was one point I saw him. He was he really was slimming weight. down. Yes. I'm doing okay now. But Gene is his nemesis. Gene is tempting him with pizza. Well, because Gene's jealous. Yes. No, no. Gene and, and I, what? Gene and I are equally powerless over pizza. You know Roger would be really <laughs> handsome if he lost 100 pounds. He would be gorgeous. And he would make you look yes, very old. He'd be yes. thin and have hair. That's right. <laughs> okay, what is it, John? All right, John, what is it? What did he weigh the last time? Okay, we just got to move the scale closer for the e cameras anyway. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, we got to make sure it's a... <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, last time it was 270 pounds. Okay. All right. All right. What do you say? More or less? That was a 90. Oh, look at this. The coat's coming off. Of course it is. It came off. <laughs> no. I'm going to make a prediction. Don't you take your pants off. I'm going to make a prediction. Roger will win. The scale will say 271 mi minus no, 5. No, 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 no. No, wait. Let's clear this up before he steps on. Yeah. Okay. It is not. We're going to spot him five pounds in the sense that so he won't be ashamed. He didn't really weigh 270 the last time. He weighed 265 because you're saying that. But he, That's right. We're using the I same scale. Here, Howard. Scale. We we give him a five. It's the same yeah. scale. So why would he be? Why would we give him five pounds? We know that it was the same last time. It is the same. Okay, so I have to weigh less than 271, right? That's right. Okay. He'll be 266. Can we get in on the end? <laughs> what did it say? I'm not even gonna look. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. What is it? 76. <laughs> 276. <laughs> Even with the five pound spread. Why did you let that sit on the action, Dick? Look at him looking. <laughs> McNeely had a better chance, Howard. What do you want from this scale? Uh, <laughs> I don't want anywhere near that. Uh, uh, near that. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> 261. <laughs> Wait a minute. What does it say? <laughs> <laughs> you can't see that. It's up there. Me. No, it's 276. I swear it was. No, but I wouldn't lie. <laughs> All right, I'll let you slide on the 100. Oh, Jesus. Because I see you're not paying. <laughs> I wouldn't. Listen, I, he gave me the hundred. He's throwing money the at you. Because take the hundred back. I don't want. And I want you to know that it's dirty money. Here, take it back. Go I'll ahead. Take it back. You go buy pizza. That's, now, listen, <laughs> I want to tell you something. I made this bet. I put out $100 here because I knew what I weighed. Uh, now, hey, what do you I want from want, me? Here's what I want to do with this Why don't you strip and get back on? Where's You're so loose. I want him to go out to an all-night Kmart and come in here with a <laughs> scale off the shelf that's still in the shrink. Fine. Okay. Here's right. $100. Well, Gary, go. He can get, a Gary, scale. Here we get go. anything in New York right now. We got on, we're on for another... The guy that got me the bagel, <laughs> go get us a scale. <laughs> Gary, go out. Here that's open? All right. Yes. One Gary, come in here. Going out of business stores, oh, shoppers let me, Would you allow me to arrange for it? Yeah, please. Gary, come in here. Let me okay. let me handle my people. Gunga Din. <laughs> Gunga Din. How about, about dialing mattress? Don't they have a built-in scale? <laughs> yeah. Gunga Din. Hey, John. Oh, here's Gunga Din. Gunga Din, come here. 
Let me tell you something. Do you think you can get a scale? I could tell him exactly where to go. Where? There's an all night Genovese right on Third Avenue in the. Can you go to the all night Genovese? Um, yeah, I can all right. go there. Here's a hundred bucks. Okay. Come back with the best scale they have in the house. Okay. Health you got to do the, You got to do this health meter. Go ahead. Sky's the limit. Hundred dollars, okay. right there. Okay. Now I'm still leaving my hundred dollars out here. Double oh, quick, chop bet. chop. That's the same hundred dollars. That's my hundred dollars. You gave it back to me. <laughs> oh, that was a jackass. I am. What's the bet now? What's the bet now? Yeah. But I'm never gonna. I'm not gonna collect. It's the same bet on a new scale. All right. Okay. Same bet, except how will we know what I should weigh? Listen, sit down. We'll get the scale so you can save face. We'll see if we can We can't. All you. right. How about okay, this? So I got the I bet. 276 is a hefty Wait amount. A Wait, really? I got the bet. Yeah. We, he says he weighs 261. Right. You bet him that he may, weighs more even on this new scale. That's right. Yep. I thought it was 271. No, he said he weighed 261. Well, he weighs he weighs he weighs 261 on Mars. <laughs> now that's on my scale where I kind of lean one way and then you lean the other way. You know, Earth, Earth's Earth's gravitational pull. Sometimes when I lean the other way, I weigh a little more. <laughs> Earth's gravitational pull. Will but here is you know his health is obviously critical to yeah. himself, his right. wife, and to you. And to, I was getting right. to that point. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh. I'm, I'm, I'm working yeah, on the trainers. I pump iron three days a week. Yeah. You want to feel do, my muscles? Really? Uh, no, I don't want to feel my muscles. I, I, actually, I, I actually met his trainer, and he said that Roger is in good shape. Roger's yeah, very strong. Say no, he's not in good shape. No. Stop saying that. Okay. Don't, don't be an enabler. Yeah, he said he was strong. <laughs> Let me say something. What the problem is, when you weigh yourself at home, you hold on to the sink. <laughs> And that keeps you lifted. The refrigerator. And that's the problem. You hold yourself up. You can't. I want you to, first of all, I'm a vegetarian, <laughs> so my cholesterol is 160. Yeah, but you're putting sauce on everything. So you put hot. When sauce was the on. last time you had a Big Mac? Me. Uh, Eleven years. When's the last time you had one? Not in the last year. <laughs> wow. You don't believe it? No. You don't. I've had. I go. I get uh, the McLean Deluxe. Oh. You, you think without you, cheese? <laughs> McLean Deluxe. Without the cheese. Yeah, you think? Deluxe. You think he's lying? No, I, I, if he had a McLean Deluxe in the last two weeks, then that would be accurate. All right, you saw that. No. I, I you heard. I you heard I he was at McDonald's? Two, I had two of them in the last Who two weeks. Who reports to you when he goes to McDonald's? I, I wouldn't say my sources. Why can't he stay out of McDonald's? Gene has a lot of fans among the people who work in the checkout window at McDonald's. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's where most there of his fans are. There is nothing wrong That's with right. that. All right. All right. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me just say something. What we're going to do is take a break. By then, perhaps the scale will be here. Then I can ask you guys about some films. I know oh, you want to talk now. about the movie that would Seven. Be novel. And you want to talk about the movie uh, Showgirls. Have Showgirls. you seen either one, Howard? No. Have you? I've seen Seven. Howard never seen No, no, no. We're going to wait till we get back. We're going to get. We're going to wait till we get back. Please. Could it be get possible, back. just for fun, to talk with Robin no. directly? <laughs> that's, never, that's not fun. Robin gets very upset. Let me handle it. <laughs> I mean, how about it? How about just turning the angle? How and about and you guys? How about you guys Robin get a radio show? You invite Robin on, and then she will talk to movies with you. Until then, I run the show, and I will be the one to tell See, it's you. It's not when like to us, Gene. It's not a partnership. No, right. no. the king of all media and his no. slave. It doesn't work oh, that way. Oh. Wrong. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. That's an outrage. There's a format to the program, and that's how we run things here. Oh, but, well, okay. But as a, but as a free form No, because what you want to do is you want to sit there and drone on about movies. No. i got to keep the thing moving. Drone on about movies? We're movie critics. What do yeah. you have us on for? But there's a way you got to drone on about your book? No. <laughs> to check your weight. I keep things moving. She doesn't keep things moving? No. Well, let me say something. No. My, she yeah. wouldn't know. He's never done no, it. No, 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 no. Listen to me. How about that's one not minute with Robin and Control? I'm very insecure. One minute out of your... I'm too insecure performer. I, if she does a better job ever, than me, you I'll you be ever thrown go to out. The men's room when you're on the air? No. One minute. If I leave you, you guys hold it for one three, minute. four hours. Let me say something. I'm not worried about her. I'm worried about the two of you. <laughs> getting the two of you under control and getting you down. Robin's very nice. She'll let you guys drone on because she's nice to you. Drone on? Yes. One minute. I'm I drone on. on. No, I have to control you. I I get you going. I, boom, boom, boom. Then we get back to the weight. I got a whole plan with you guys. I know how to make you guys top shelf guests. <laughs> on your own. What are you saying? They don't do well on other shows? No. <laughs> All, right. All right. We have Siskel and Ebert here. Are you selling anything? Wait, where is it? Let me tell you. Our 20th anniversary year. Why don't you tell it's people amazing. where they can see our show in some of your great cities? Is the scale here yet? 
It'll be here any second, but somebody just called in and said that McDonald's hasn't made the Mc McLean Deluxe in over a year. Right. Okay, I'll bet $100 on that. Uh, really? <laughs> okay, I will. In fact, I'll bet $200 on that. <laughs> that's what I know. You know, and we know you know, too. That's person to call back. <laughs> that's the one we bet you found out that The McDonald's, that the McDonald's menu McLean. we know you know. No, listen, they do make the McLean Deluxe. I had one within the last two weeks. I know they make it. All right. It's very good. That person... No, no, no. Here's what the mistake is. Easy, easy. I'm going to defend you know Roger. I'm going to defend Roger. The thought right of losing the McLean Deluxe is hurting him. I know. <laughs> Poor Roger. No, no, no. The fact is that it is not on the listed menu board as they make it special. McLean Deluxe. They make it special. Of course they, they, they see Roger special. come in. He's a celebrity. They'll make a, the McLean it Deluxe. A, it was not a smash hit. They uh, probably <laughs> just make a quarter pounder and step on it. <laughs> I, yeah, right. Who <laughs> got all the fat? <laughs> ring it out. Ring it out. <laughs> but, uh, but the point is... Paper is, towels. Right. <laughs> what did you say? It's very true. Down, you walk yeah. in, you get special treatment at McDonald's. Oh, obviously. my God, does he get special treatment. Why would you go to today, Mr. Ebert? Yeah. Why would you your usual stool? No, it's too close. They build those stools next to the tables, you know? Yeah, I know. You know, they have them bolted to the floor. Yeah, because they're Unless you weigh table. about 100 pounds, you can't get in there. <laughs> and most people at McDonald's weigh a little more than 100 pounds. They certainly do. Yeah. Well, why would you go to McDonald's to eat a McLean Deluxe? You would go there. You want to eat... Uh, fast food. It's fast food when you you're in a hurry. Exactly. I'm a busy guy. Right. Listen See, there's one across from our station in Chicago. Yeah. You guys are in New York on WNYW, which is Channel 5. Who even knew it was called WNYW? It's Fox. It's Fox. What time yeah. is it on, Howard? Uh, two in the morning. No, no, it is. I'm just kidding. 11 p.m. 11 p.m. Excellent time slot. Right. That's um, what day is that? Sunday. All right. Los Angeles. You're on KABC Sunday at 6:30 p.m. You guys are supposed to be on a network. It is KABC. I mean, it's, it's it's hard to know when you're we've on. We've been on that station. That's Channel Seven for like 13 years. You're on Monday at 1:30 in the morning in a rerun. On in Washington on WJLA Channel Seven. That's a great station. You're on 1:30 in the morning on Sunday. Yeah, that's a great time. Uh, that's so hot. What happened there? Well, we're really we went and had lunch with him. We need Colin Powell. Yeah, we should oh, have really? had dinner apparently. Colin Powell. We should have had sex everything. with him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Colin and in, Powell has a daughter who's an actress. I is mean, that right? Yeah. Is she as uh, as wonderful as him? Is she is? Uh, I've never met her. You you, you got to laugh at Colin Actually, Powell. Actually, I did meet her. You have to. I mean, you cannot take this seriously, can you? This is an, a way of selling books to announce that you're running for president, but of course... I don't think he's announced that he's running for president. No, he hasn't, but this... They, they, uh, pup, let me tell you something. I'll tell you a quick I story about will. selling books. I think he will. Number one, I'm going to tell you a quick story about selling books. One of the greatest publicists in the world told me this. He was representing Donald Trump on his book several years ago, and he came up with the idea. He floated a rumor that Donald Trump was going to run for president. Donald Trump was not going to run for any president. Remember that? There was hysteria. Donald Trump was going to be the president, and they sold millions of books. This is a public relations book. Colin Powell would never be you know, a serious I remember, candidate. You know, I remember that when your book was coming out, you were going to run for governor. No, that was that, after, that happened about a year and a half Isn't after. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? You have no idea of timeline whatsoever. <laughs> You're just going to go and slam me without uh, checking your You mean your, your book facts. came out more than a... We're going to check your weight and your $55 million yeah. gross, and I guarantee you they're both off. Is that right, Robin? Is that's that right? right. Oh, yeah, his private part came out two campaign? years ago. Yes. And his campaign was how long ago? Uh, about a year. How, yeah, how, is George, how is George right. Pataki doing? I went to school with him. Fantastic. Let me you tell you about George Pataki. I used to play this, ping pong with George every night. This yeah. guy has turned out to be a great governor, and I'll tell you why. I knew he would. He is not like Cuomo, who for 12... You know Cuomo has a radio show now, and every day he acts like... He critiques the guy who was in office for 12 years. He says, why aren't they doing anything about this? And why aren't they... Here's a guy who had 12 years to do didn't something. Do didn't do a thing except think. He thought. He would ponder. He would write speeches. Here's a guy, Pataki, gets in, immediately gives the taxpayers what they want. He made some rough decisions. He had to cut the budget. Some people don't like him for that, but he did cut the budget. He went ahead and he gave us the death penalty, which New Yorkers wanted. That's why they voted for him. He signed it in. He gave us nighttime construction, which he promised he would do. We are now going, we have a bill called the Howard Stern bill that will be <laughs> night. It's true. I, stand, I stood by yeah, him no, while he signed a big, it. That's a good one. A nighttime construction bill. And he has done a couple of other things. And I'll say the biggest accomplishment so far in his short time in office, he took that Javits Center and got all the mafiosa out of there and cleaned up the whole goddamn thing. For 12 years, Mario sat there while nobody cleaned up the Javits Center. So God bless George Pataki, your former ping pong player. <laughs> so we went to college together, and George... He was... sent all the mafiosa to Chicago where you guys no, 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 no. I'll tell you, George was a real hard worker in school. Of course. I had access to all the grades that were being... And one of the things they used How to do... How did you have you, access? I was my job to help pay for my college education. Yes. I was you looked up office. everybody's grades? I was my... No, I was... Unofficially, right? And what, the, what, and they, what were his what grades? They used to did do you get to yet. see all the nude pictures, too? 
No, I just took took one. We we had to take them, but uh, Jesus, can you believe that? <laughs> you had to take nude pictures. Of what? Posture that? pictures. Don't posture you pictures. Don't you remember that? Oh, Ron, that's right. Ron yeah, yeah that was a Lake. wonderful article on the New York Times. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's very strange. Anyway, you uh, took nude pictures of your. Were you photographed nude? I believe I was. I think uh, I think we all were freshman year. No kidding. Yes, you believe you, you were nude or you were? Well, I think we did it. I mean, it wasn't a big event in my life. I hope those files have been destroyed. Yeah, apparently they have. They have. <laughs> anyway, George, take that, please. <laughs> George, one of the things they used to do at Yale, it was kind of strange. They would make a prediction on how well you would do. It was on your grade sheet. Oh, All right. What was his prediction? The pr I, uh, George was predicted, I think, to get in, uh, like, what well, we would probably be about a B minus or C plus B minus, what they predicted he would get. Uh -huh. It was actually zero through 100 grade. Right. And what did he get? George got about average about a B plus. In other words, George was an overachiever. Right. He exceeded what, what they uh, yeah. expected. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. is true of his governorship. Yeah. They didn't expect I, much, I, and now he's doing it all. I, and I did predict that would happen. Any more interesting? interesting? Can he tell us any more celebrities and how they did? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Who you know, else was in the Why don't we take a break? George, George is now the biggest celebrity in our class. Yeah. And what about you? What, what did they predict you would do? I don't know, Gene. I think you're better known around the country than George. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> <laughs> That's important to I him. got a longer run. At any rate, right. uh, let me take a break. All right, I hate I to stop. I want to know what he was predicted oh, to do. I think I was predicted a pretty much about the same as George, and I did a little bit better, but not as So you are an overachiever? Better. Slightly. All right. But George was considerable. Fascinating story. Well, as your governor. That's You're right. Like yeah, I like <laughs> Very, I'm serious. And there were naked pictures of George Pataki somewhere. <laughs> did you ever see him naked? I don't think so. You didn't look at his picture? He thought he could beat me in ping pong, and he was stunned that I could beat him. And did you, when you looked at his record, you must have seen his naked picture. No, 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 no. They didn't have those were separate. One was in the I gym, see. and the other see, was in the day. These office. two men have gone on to have great success in life, and if they ever meet, in the back of both of their minds will be the thought of who won those ping pong games. No, That's no, right. George knows. And George won. Campaign manager who won? called it. George, campaign manager, called me during the election. They wanted me to endorse him, which I couldn't. And actually, what I said was, Why couldn't you? Got, well, I'm not supposed to because of my oh, uh, for God's sake. My job. Be but a man. You know what I said? You'd be pleased. I said you have three good candidates. That's when you were still in the race. Thank you. No, we had two uh, good candidates I when I was three. in the race. Actually, I think you had three. <laughs> I think you had three. Thank you. Uh, no, I think we had one good candidate. I think I would have been an excellent governor, I, if I dare say so. <laughs> Is it really the money? OJ, guilty or innocent? Was Quickly, it? Roger, you were married to a black woman. Yeah. Must be a different. He is innocent. What? Who's you're there? saying he's innocent? Oh, no, he just oh, said I'm married saying? to a black woman. You are married to a black woman, are you not? of the evidence, I'd say he's guilty. You would say he's guilty. And your wife says? I think she would agree with me. His wife's a lawyer, you know. Wow. And all of your black know. relatives believe that as well? <laughs> I haven't really polled them, Howard. I'll go home and do that first thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Gene, you are, of course, married to a white woman, so there's no issue here. That's correct. Uh, very good. Uh, uh, no, no issues. We know what his answer is. Based on uh, your review of O.J. movie. Uh, you know, Howard, we just had our third child. You just had a third child? Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Really? I thought you were much older. How old are you? 49. A little older. You have your third much kid. Older? So you just had a baby and you're 49? Mm -hmm. You must have a young wife. Well, there's a big Wait gap. Wait younger than I am. Yes. You're 49? Nine, yeah, two, two girls, nine and 12, and a boy, yeah. seven months on Sunday. That's you're, like 40, you're 49? Mm -hmm. You know, I have a 12-year-old. you turn 50? January 26th, same day as Paul Newman. <laughs> you know, I have a 12-year-old and a 9-year-old and a 2-year-old. We're very similar, but I'm a much younger man than you. How old are you, Harvey? I'm 41. Much younger. <laughs> a young man? <laughs> That's right. My mother, they would talk, a friend of her, my mother, one of their friends would die. Mm -hmm. How old was she? 76. Still a young woman. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that's pitiful. When 79 is young. And you claim to be 49 years old? Not only do I claim And Gene weighs 195. Ah. <laughs> All right, very good. No, I'm just kidding, of course. Uh, you look very young. Thank Let you. me take a break. When Gene, we get back. Uh, I mean, is Roger considering becoming a father? Um, I don't think so. I'm a grandfather. Oh, oh. your wife had uh, kids? Had two children. Oh, and we have two grandchildren that are... Great kids. Not to point a phrase, you. they are the apple of my eye. They are the nicest, sweetest, smartest kids. They're very smart kids, and they're, they're very nice. good kids. And her first husband was black? Yes, he was. So these are black grandchildren. I mean, they, they are fully black. Well, of course, you would have to go even more deeply into it than that, Howard, in your scientific uh, <laughs> racial analysis. <laughs> right. And ask what race their father was. Black. Correct. So you have very black grandchildren. That's right, but I, I you thought that you had left out a step there in your unearing, you know, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't razor mean, sharp. No, analysis. I mean it must be it must be quite a picture. As people say these are my grandchildren, and probably everyone's going, "Oh my God, how does what the, difference does it?" Oh, make? it makes a big difference. Uh, it's a lot really, of people. It's it really, confusion. Not it does. Love oh, is involved. You're it does. Silly. And the kids accept you as a grandfather? Yes, they do. 
Really? I love them. Even in the hood? I mean, you're walking around with them and... Uh, now, they... how do you know they live in a hood? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Even in the hood? They make such a sudden. They live in an integrated neighborhood, <laughs> like sure. a lot of people do in Chicago. But at your family reunions, you must look like the coach. I mean, you don't look like, uh, you don't look like a guy who... <laughs> <a> log... <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't look like a guy who fits in with the, with the crowd. There I mean. are a lot of different races at the family reunions, <laughs> and all of us love each other. All right, okay. All right. Wow. All right. Very good. <laughs> All right. Oh, but we, no, no plans to become a father. <laughs> no, uh, no plans of your own to become a father. Not at the present right, moment. Right, right, I understand. No. You know your glasses are fogging up from this? <laughs> 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 All right, listen to me. Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel, our favorite guests here. Sport? Who's a better sport than him? Nobody. 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 You two right. guys are great guests. That's right. We you are. are. I, I've always said and it. And then why weren't we mentioned in the first book? Because uh, people don't care about the two of you that much. <laughs> I had to go with a really big name. Oh, no. You will be mentioned in the next book, and I want to thank are you. Are they mentioned? I've already written. I don't care. Gene, I don't care what. Liar. Gene, it doesn't matter what he says You guys are great. To me. You should have heard what he said to Joan Rivers yesterday. I couldn't believe it. What did I say? I started it on Edgar. Well, Edgar, Edgar, uh, he, she claimed Fox killed Edgar. Do you remember that? But the things that you said, which I'm not even going to repeat about you Edgar's don't dead body's listen. present... Uh, Hold it a second. Uses. I was not out of line. Let me explain myself. I'll put it in context. Did you see Joan Rivers' TV special? It was critically panned. I no. saw a little bit of it. Yeah. It, was, it was too serious. She's a comedian. I said to her... What are you talking about? The movie? The movie of her oh, life yeah. when Edgar committed suicide yeah. and she went on. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It was a brave story, but it was a little too self-serving. Well, I said especially to her, with her playing the part. Exactly. I said to her, to lighten it up, wouldn't it be great if you did a little fantasy sequence where you dig Edgar up, <laughs> and like Weekend at Bernie's, you carry him around with you. And then when the Fox executives and stuff get into uh, a, a fight with you, they, it, you, Edgar turns around, they swing around, and he punches the Fox executives in the face. Can you believe this? Jim? And then they have a wild party. And then Edgar, or Edgar comes back like Topper. Now listen to this. Edgar comes back like Topper. I figured out why Fartman never made it. <laughs> <laughs> no story uh, thing. Oh, oh come yeah. on. You're out of line. Now you're out of line. I'm the same Edgar comes, your book. Edgar comes back as Topper. Listen to this. And he see, you know, Joan has a young boyfriend. He sees the two of them in bed, and he goes ape. He goes wild. And then in the room, he doesn't want the boyfriend to realize, so he just pretends to be dead. So only Joan knows he's alive. He won't be awake when uh, the boyfriend is there. And like Weekend at Birdies... She says, I keep his body at home with me. And think of the fun. He's in the bed with them while the they're fun. making love. Don't See, you think that would why, be funny? This is why I'm not offended by anything that was said today. I was listening right. yesterday. Thank you. <laughs> you think that's, you, you well, think that's out of line? line? I can't believe. Here's you think I that's out of line? This is the part of like Weekend at Bernie's. Did you this like is, Weekend at Bernie's? Love, love Weekend at Love that movie. Don't you knock that movie. This is the part I can't believe. I can't believe she sat here and took it. Took it. She loved it. She wants to produce it. Why would she come on the show if she wasn't going to take it? But it's take amazing. It. I mean, at some point, I mean, you would think that maybe she would... Be she offended. loves me. Offended. Offended by what? They were already on the outs, those two. She was already trying to divorce him. Are you kidding me? <laughs> she, was, she was so hot for young meat. Forget about it. Oh. She's horny. I mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Do you want to take a break or anything? Yeah, let's take a break. <laughs> you won't laugh, will you? You want to laugh and you won't. Uh -huh. No. Uh -huh. All right, Roger no, Ebert no, and Gene Siskel. You're now agreeing with no, Roger. The only thing, yeah. the only thing that anyone ever did that bothered me is the last time I was here when you had a guy on, and I don't know who it was, who yes. I think is a little slow. Who, Elephant Boy? No, who was it? Was it Kenneth? Kenneth Keith? No, no I think that somebody came in off the street that day. Well, that, and then you were picking on him. Yeah, you were laughing your ass off. No, no, no. Oh, I, saw I got you. up and left. Oh, you're a big fan of that, making fun of the retarded. I know you. <laughs> I know that. That's your sense of humor. <laughs> you got a, You have to fight with equals, or in our case, oh, be, no. Don't be silly. One I would never take Robin advantage of some... You wouldn't let us have one what? minute this is, Robert... this is the Howard Stern show. Right. When I get my show, we'll have our time. She's going to have her show soon. I'm dying of stomach cancer. Take my advice. You shouldn't get your own show. I have stomach cancer. Well, I'm going to be dead in six months. If it works, don't she doesn't even listen. Did you oh. hear what he just said? What did he say? I'm going to be dead in six months. I have stomach cancer. I don't believe it. Yeah, true. True fact. i got six months to live. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. I'll miss you. I'm not going to sit you. here and get morose about it. I couldn't wait to believe it. What, what, uh, what was the, what the hospital thing, was the diagnosis? Listen, the only thing that, uh, Lennox Hill, the only thing that I, the only thing that I get uh, upset about is my last wish is to the audience that they reward me with the highest ratings of my career before I go out. That's all I ask for. Cause this I November? Amount. Or you're October? Yeah, this, have this, you signed uh, your November. death for sweeps? Yeah. <laughs> I have. I was in Lummox Hill, and they, I mean, Lennox Hill, and they, uh, all right, let's take a break. Let's take a break. Okay, and when we come back, don't be sad. When we come back, but we 
wait a minute. Roger just advised me not to get my own show. I didn't necessarily say I was leaving here, Listen, Roger. Robin, if he's going to die, said... start looking around. <laughs> <laughs> you got to think of the future. I simply said that I might want to do something on the side, on my own. That's well, right. That's all right. That's, no, that's, that's okay. Right. Yeah, okay. But this this works, so don't break it. I down. love doing okay. this. We love this. We that. would never break this. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's... Siskel and Ebert will be back. They want to talk about this new movie, Showgirls, which got an NC-17 rating. Which was a gimmick. And seven. Oh, you got the scale? And the scale is here. Wait, don't open oh, that scale until we get back. Scale. We got to take a commercial. Don't break. open the scale till we get back. We got a bet going. It is a help of Roger will be weighed in when we get back. The deal is I'm going to weigh less on the scale. No, you won't. We, we've been asking okay, everybody. I'm yes. betting $100 that I weigh less, right? You know what? You didn't do so good on the last bet. Not Keep your money you to yourself. you weigh less on the scale, that you weigh less than you, or you weigh what you say you weigh. Right. No, that, well, because I don't, uh, that's what I weigh on my scale. I don't know about this, but oh, I just say oh I weigh less. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's always like 20 it's different rules. It's always rules. Let's take a break. It's right. them in Take a break. Well, we'll be back. What? Well, we, we've been asking people, like, as we went along to buy the scale. Everybody says Roger probably weighs about 300, 310. That's about the average. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah. All right, let's uh -oh. see. Uh -oh. Howard. What does it say? Let me see what it says. Accurate to 270. Accurate to 270. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, man. After that, we don't know. And it's a health -o meter what you requested, health -o meter Okay, we'll be back right after these words. This is one of the best songs ever written. We're back with the Howard Stern Show. Here's Howard. Oh, I love that. Oh, my God, I love that. You guys into music or what? Sure. Are you? Yeah. Are you listening to good stuff or are you listening to garbage? What are you listening like, Dixie Land and stuff? I like those uh, barbershop quartet right Do you really? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Can't believe it. Where do you get those? <laughs> and you know what, Roger Miller, I like the old Miss Miller stuff. <laughs> right, listen, we, I, I, I'm running out of time with you guys, and I want to uh, get to everything. First of all, we have the new scale. Okay. Anytime you're ready. You want to get that with us? All right, okay. Here's the new scale. Roger Ebert, the great film reviewer, very good sport. We said he looked a little heavy. Whoa. Whoops. Whoops. Roger, easy, Roger. Oh. Anything Help him. to get off that table. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to unwrap the new scale. Unwrap the new scale. Where is the new scale? Give it to me. I'll unwrap it. Where is the new scale? Please. Somebody help me. What? Somebody take it? Somebody took the new scale. Right. Okay. Morons. What, who do we have working for? Make sure zeroed. Is it zeroed? Put it down on the floor to zero. Zero? I zeroed it out. You zeroed it out on the floor? Yep. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. Now, what? Roger claims... Now, here's the deal. I'll make you a bet if you want, but Roger claims he weighs... Less than what the other scale said. No, no you no. said you said you weighed two sixty one. You said two sixty one. Go for it. On my scale, I do. Okay, well let's <laughs> no, see what you. Right, now hold the hold a second before you step on there. Tell us. Listen, it's silly for us to make a bet because I feel uncomfortable taking your money. My guess. Sure you do. Okay. I did. I did. I give you back your money. Yeah. Okay. So it's ridiculous to bet. This is this is this. if you want to bet me, I'll bet you. Here's another. Is this my hundred? That's uh, that's my hundred. That is your hundred. Yes. Where did you get a hundred? Because no. he put it back and, and took. Five no, you're right. No, he's right. He's he right. Yeah, yeah. This is your hundred. Do you want to bet another hundred? But I gave you back your other hundred. Let's bet twenty dollars. Right. A and real bet, and the guy's got to take okay, it. All right, here, take back bet. your hundred. Okay. okay. All right. Now, what are we betting? We're betting whether you weigh two sixty one. No. All right. Yeah. We're betting what? Whether you weigh less? Less than the okay, other let's scale? Take, let's split no, between two sixty one and two seventy six is fifteen pounds. Right. I'll, let's split the difference. Two sixty eight. Seven and a half. I weigh two sixty eight or less. Okay, that's okay. the bet. Two sixty-eight right. or less. I'll take that. I'll get my twenty. Hold it. Here we go. Let me get my twenty. Here we go. So you don't think I'll pay okay, you? And don't then worry. for once and all, at least we'll clear up the problem. Yeah, but of the I other also want But I also want to say that that's a lot less than he's weighed in the past, and so he's doing. Better. No, he's not. Okay. Don't 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 okay. be an enabler. Here's my twenty. What's he weigh? Well, hold on a second. This is going to be tight. Uh oh, no, it looks it bad. Uh, I see somebody uh, laughing. Talk? We're talking about okay. the scale, Jerry. Two seventy-one. Oh, for God's sake! Give me my twenty. This time I'm collecting. Two seventy-one. Take Give me twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my twenty? And you said the other scale was off by five pounds. No, you didn't. This is my twenty. Not on me, Robin. I gave you a hundred back. Robin points out. I said the other scale was off by five pounds. <laughs> Look, he's all upset. I know. Look, he don't even have twenty. He makes a bet he doesn't have 20. Aww. You got a 20? Give me the 20. I'm taking it this time because I can't make a bet. I can't believe yet. it. That's my bet. I can't believe it. <laughs> Actually, I'm wearing clothes. That's probably That's it. probably it. Yeah. That's all. That's oh, wait right. a minute. Did I take my billfold out? Oh, yes. Well, we know that. Oh, he's going to be so heavy. Yeah, wait. He's getting back on. <laughs> You're going back on again? How about going all the way? What's that? Get naked? Get naked? Yeah. Why don't you, you take your clothes off? Come in. You don't have guys come in and do it, do you? Sure. It'd be the first film critic to get naked on the show. <laughs> <laughs>
What happened? What, what, well, would you I take lost a... another pound. <laughs> I'm still, you <laughs> still lost that. Gene is looking, like shaking his head. You didn't lose anything. No. I lost another pound. <laughs> <laughs> lost you lost another. nothing. All right, okay. listen. Siskel and Ebert are here. I'm better than I was. All right, listen. You only lost by 20 way, bucks. Stop you know, by your, your there's head. There's but. an article in the current Gentleman Quarterly in which the headline, the readout headline is, all critics except Paul and Kale and Siskel and Ebert are slime. Yeah, well, you guys are great. I I'll give you a compliment right now. Yeah, Siskel and Ebert are the most fun to watch. I see a lot of clones who have come on. They they try yeah, to imitate. Everybody does a tag team thing. Everybody does a duo uh, review. You guys are the only ones that uh, hold up. You're interesting to watch. You keep the show moving along. Your your criticism is uh, not only valid, but it also the the rapport between the two of you is fun. You fight a little bit. You you know you, it keeps things going. It's nice when you get in an argument too. You don't force the argument, but if it comes, it's interesting. So I like that. You're both very opinionated. Each The reason the chemistry works is because each one of you thinks you're better than the other guy. And you're both out to prove that you're better. And that's what I like about it. Sometimes your reviews are off. I have to disagree. Spike Lee, we have our disagreement. You think the greatest Spike Lee movie ever made is, uh, I don't even know. Right, 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 right. Worst movie ever made. <laughs> Secondly, uh, you are a collector of memorabilia. Yes, sir. No, not uh, well. I've had a famous thing happen. One of your so. favorite movies of all time was Saturday Night, Night Fever. Fever, and I bought the suit in 1978 that uh, Travolta wore. I was interviewing Jane Fonda. I actually outbid her at the auction, paid two thousand dollars for it, and uh, this past summer it sold to a. Uh, you mean to tell me you collector. bid? You bid against Jane Fonda, you and been she better could... off. If you'd married Ted Turner, think of the money you could have made. You bid against Jane Fonda, <laughs> yeah, and she, she can only go to. Th she only went to nineteen hundred. You know what actually happened? Bella she... Abzug walked in during the auction and distracted and her. Started entering it up, and I uh, kept I my see. hand up. I would have paid much more than two thousand dollars for it. And you got it for two grand, and you just yeah. kept it at home. I mean, you know, who would even think that the thing would go up in value? Well, Did I you... loaned it out to a lot of museums, mm -hmm. and uh, was here at the opening of uh, Heart of um, Planet Hollywood when right. it opened. I mean, I loaned it out. All and he, uh, he had to take it to the uh, tailor shop, though, to have the crotch taken in. Is that right? Uh, Is that true? Over well. Okay. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> it's only Christie's for 145000 pounds. 145000 uh, Who bought it, do you know? Uh, a guy in Europe. Collector in Europe. No kidding, 145000 for any movie costume, by far. I think the previous record had been like twenty or 30 So you don't get the full 145000 They are your agents, in a sense, yeah, to Christie's, and then they, they Overwhelmingly. Give you, so you made over $100,000. Uh-huh. Wow. Hey, after taxes, you only get about fifty, right? That's not that good. All right. So anyway, I was just trying to nice get jealous. Turn on a two thousand yeah. dollar investment. I was starting to get jealous, but I just have to put it in perspective. That's all. well for you. That's, that's right. What a peanuts. week? That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. No, no, no. That's really cool. I would never think to buy some stupid suit. Well, you know, I know. We sit around all the time going, who? The question is about um, the movies that are out now. What costume could you buy that would be worth money in fifteen years? Uh, maybe interview maybe. with a vampire. How about? Forrest Gump's little blue check shirt. No, see, it yes. doesn't mean anything. No, no, no it wouldn't mean anything. anything. The lunchbox? The test, is, the test is whether something is an icon and whether you don't have to... You can what about one of the black, the black suits, shirts, and ties that uh, Travolta and Jackson wear at the beginning of Pulp Fiction? I think that would be worth money. But you wouldn't know what they were. You'd have to explain it. You see, that's what was so great about the white suit is that you didn't have to tell anybody what it was. They knew it from across the room. You know the... Oh, everybody uh, would know that suit. <laughs> they I, I wouldn't on the cover of every book or of the films of the 70s? Sure they would, Roger. You, um... It's iconographic. Roger uh, has bought a few things as well. Didn't you buy the refrigerator from Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. I'm just kidding you. Very funny. I'm teasing you. It's better than your joke. Yeah, sure <laughs> You're not kidding. <laughs> you just can't believe Just because you weighed 271. Don't get mad at me. I can't believe it. <laughs> all right. Well, here we go. All right. Let me ask you quickly because we're running out of time. Okay. Siskel and Ebert, you guys are on all over. You're on uh, yeah, my new on. book, Ebert's Little Movie Glossary. Oh, why didn't you and say all so? all the stores. Okay. So that's in... Oh, you know, the last time I was on, I didn't have it yet, so I'll have to send you a copy. Yeah, please. I wouldn't have to read this. Finish reading the statement. All right. Philadelphia, you're on WKYW, which, of course, is Channel 3. That's a big station in Philly. You're on at uh, noon on Sundays. Yeah. In Chicago, you're on Saturdays at 5 p.m. And in Sunday at 11.15 p.m. Those are good uh, time slots. That's, That's on Channel, channel 2. two. Yeah. And uh, let me see. What else is this? To Die For? Oh, these are films that we reviewed this weekend. Oh, I see. Okay. To All right. Die For. I'll, I'll jump. Uh, to Die For is a picture that just opened in New York uh, yesterday. And it's terrific. Gus Van Sant, independent filmmaker, with a terrific performance by Nicole Kidman. Very funny about a woman who desperately wants to be a I'll see. I'll see that in video. 
And oh, also, God. because Howard. I never get to go to the movies. He I'm doesn't very go busy. to the movies. I don't go to the movies. I'm too famous. Just, I can't right. go. I'm too no. famous. No. In no, he's lazy. I'm lazy. <laughs> I like it on video. No, by the way, I will review this. I saw the picture of Nicole Kidman from that movie. Uh, she's gone up a lot in terms of appearance. She used to look very sloppy. She looks and she looks good. Well, in this movie, she her whole thing is grooming. She's a cable TV uh, weather, weather girl. person. Yes, and, she looks good. Uh, oh, she she, does a great is, job. she absolutely lives to be photographed. Do you think those are breast implants? I didn't had never occurred to me that this isn't part of your review. Okay, I, no, I, I see. I see. Talk to me about this uh, pornographic movie. Uh, Showgirls. 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 Uh, you know, Trash. I wish that somebody Trash. not, I wish not that somebody would make sexy. not sexy. You reviewed the last one. Let me talk first okay. for a change. Yeah, go ahead, <laughs> there they go. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I think he was looking at me. I can't tell behind those glasses. I think he was. <laughs> well, I wish hard to avoid you at I... seventy. <laughs> <laughs> He wouldn't be wearing the dark glasses if it weren't for that light reflecting off of your... You know, he's the only forehead that has its own zip code. That is very okay, true. Here we go. Oh, very good. Here we go. <laughs> what? Are you going to review that joke? No. <laughs> That's an old... It was a bad joke, right? It's a bad well, joke. It's, it's, it's an old joke. Wrong it wasn't even funny. <laughs> if Herb it wasn't even a funny. Yeah. Show, it would work, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Now, listen, he's criticizing the, the joke. Shriner. Okay, I'm going to give you a joke. Okay. Gene originated. Okay. I'm so big, I have my own zip code. He once said about me. Right. I now recycle the joke to refer to his forehead, and now it's not a funny joke anymore. So it's he, his joke. Right, when he says he's it's funny. He's already forgotten that he's criticizing his own material. All right, listen, you two. Calm down and give me a quick review Just of this. Just talk about okay. Okay. Go ahead, thank I you. wish, I wish somebody would make an erotic film. Joe Esterhaus my movie has movie. not had an erotic thought in his life. He doesn't know eroticism. You go to a show in Vegas. Well, wait a second. The, wait a the, the director, uh, Paul Verhoeven, yeah, Paul has made some sexy, sexy movies. Sharon Stone was sure. in... Uh, yeah, that basic, wasn't sexy. It, it, basic it, Instinct. No, you don't think that was sexy? It wasn't no, he erotic. sex and violence. It's not necessarily sexy. I'm not talking about nudity and sex. I I will, let me finish, Gene. Oh, <laughs> Gene, God, God damn it. God, you yeah. just you can't wait. No. Take up the pain. If you don't talk a thousand words a minute, he will just start talking right over you. It drives me crazy. I let him finish. Right. That's why he's done... If you run the tape, he said 80% of the words on this show so far. You are a and gentleman. And that's because I'm a gentleman and he interrupts constantly. It's right. a, it's a he steps character. on you. It, that's right. He right. does. All the time. All right. Go okay. ahead. Now, to complete my thought. <laughs> that's not true. You go to Vegas. <laughs> he interrupted to say. Right. Okay. You go to Vegas. Right. You go to one of those shows. There were 16 girls on stage that are not wearing any clothes. Is that sexy? No. No. Okay. True. Now you see a movie of it. Is that sexy? No. No. What would be sexy? Maybe if there were two people in that movie who has characters related in a way that you found erotic. There was no story is what you Nobody saying. in the movie likes each other. Everyone in Showgirls hates each other, and that is the fatal flaw of the movie. Therefore, there could be no eroticism. You know what would be sexy? What? You naked would be sexy. Oh. Can I tell you something, Howard? I'm not kidding about film that. that will answer no, listen to me. You know what there he just said? He made a good point. your listeners a great video recommendation of a film about lap dancing, sort of, yes. that is erotic. He and interrupted it is you thoughtful, too. and it's called yes. Exotica, and it's by a wonderful independent filmmaker named Adam Agoyan, E G O Y A N. His film will be out. He's Canadian. His film will be out in video for you yes. in October, and I highly. And the name of that again? Erotica. 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 Exotica. 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 And let me wonderful say director, and it's about the world of a. Lap dance. A, and a sexy movie would have been. Yeah, now, Howard, if, I believe that Gene interrupted you just as you were about to say that I had made a good point. Is that yes, correct? Yes, you yeah, made a good point. Right. A sexy movie would be one that has a plot, and you're right, between two characters that we care about. Yes, we that's have important. to feel yes. that there's something sexual, Absolutely. something yes. sexy, well, erotic going on. Let me say something on. about the selling of this film. They pretty much told you it was a piece of trash. By the way, they were uh, promoting it. Oh, they would have been so devastated if it hadn't gotten the NC-17 rating. Yeah, because there was nothing oh, really? to sell. Yeah, mm -hmm. they made it to get an NC-17. Yes. Also, the star is not very attractive. I hate to say it. She's not? Trying to sell, not, in, not in her face. She's got a good body. body. Yeah, but not her face. And they're selling sex, so you got to review it as sex. Well, you know, if you go to most clubs, most of the girls have good bodies and their, their faces are okay. That's why they have low lighting. That's a very subdued light. No, that's why I, I go to a lot of strip clubs. I, I make the girls wear bags over there. Like, <laughs> it's true. All right, listen, I want my fan. This is a fantasy. Nobody wants to light that. Talk to me about uh, Seven. Now, you like this movie. It's yeah. a good movie, yes. Yes. It's a very violent movie. It's a disturbing movie. Oddly enough, you know, Seven gets an R, and Showgirls gets an NC-17. You know what Shelley Winter said? If you cut off a woman's breast in a movie, that's an R. If you kiss it, that's an X. Right. She's right. And it's the same thing. I'd rather take a 15-year-old, let's say, if, you know, Me too. Uh, as a adult guardian or something, right, right. Coach. To, see, Coach. to see showgirls. <laughs> right. I'd rather 
You'd let a 15 year old see show girls. Showgirls before seven. Right. Yeah. Because, because it's violent. Seven, which I think, and seven is a very it's good disturbing movie. disturbing violence. Seven is a yeah, much yeah. better movie than Showgirls. It's the tracking of a but, serial killer with uh, Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman in it. And I think that it is needlessly graphic because it is such a good film and because it is so. Uh, the, the, the performance of these two guys is not just the standard senior cop, junior cop. Is Brad Pitt a good actor? Yes, he is. Yes. Yeah. He's good in this. Well, he was very good in California. With a K. Yeah. California. Yeah. I see, I've seen none of these movies. That was a good movie. Wasn't Wonderful. You'll yeah. like yeah. Because I, I, I will, will like I'm going to get that. I'm going to get it. He will also like Seven. Seven would be right up his alley. I like karate movies and violent movies. If there's killing and karate in it, I'm there. I'm a very simple man. I know. I'm a simpleton. I'm a simpleton. You can I, laugh. Wait, there's a big silence here because That's nobody I like. is disagreeing with you. Uh, <laughs> there's no argument in this You're room. agreeing that I'm a simpleton. <laughs> All right, very good. I was, right. let it, I was just going to let it stay there. Congratulations on your television show and its 20th year. Man, you guys deserve it. You guys are good tribute. together. You guys are good together. Don't uh, let anybody tell you different. And uh, you, uh, congratulations on the book. Which is what? Is it in paperback? Yeah, it's in hardbound. Ebert's little movie glossary. And, of course, uh, Roger Ebert's video companion comes out next month. Okay. And Siskel and Ebert in New York, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C. Remember New York, Sunday at 11 p.m., Channel 5. Los Angeles, Channel 7, Sunday at 6.30 p.m., Washington, D.C., 1.30 in the morning. I stay up for it. It's on uh, Channel 7. It's a lot of fun, this show. Dallas, uh, Channel 8, 11.30 p.m. on Saturday. And, of course, in Chicago, uh, 5 p.m. Saturdays on Channel 2. Philadelphia, finally, Sunday. 12 noon on Channel 3. Thanks, Cisco and Eber, for stopping by. You guys are always fun and great sports, too. I'm bringing my own scale the next time. Bring your scale in, any <laughs> scale you want. As long as it's zeroed out, we don't care. Okay. And uh, more, uh, more of those uh, diet burgers. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you guys. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Cisco and Ebert, man, I dig those two guys. I really like them. You know? They're fun. Weighing Roger has to be one of the all-time highs. I mean, it's just so great. And every scale we get, he weighs 271. It's so great. It doesn't matter. He left very frustrated. I took 20 from him because I should, but I could have taken 120 from him. He was so sure. He was I know. so sure of the new scale. He was betting on it. <laughs> He stared at the numbers. <laughs> Did you see his face? He I can't wait to put that on the E show. Back on. I hope the camera guys got that on the E show. He st he just stood there. I mean, that's the one thing you miss. Like we weighed him, and then Gene was talking and everything, but Roger was still on the scale, staring. Right. And then you, then he got off the scale, and you were sitting there, and you were on to a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. Five minutes later, he referred back. I know. To his mind is still yeah. on that scale. <laughs> <laughs> that weighing routine is the best. <laughs> I said, you, you know, you on know the what? E show, it's going to look great because he just he just stares at the scale and he's like, so he's like, and I, he gets back on it, he can't believe what yeah, he's saying. I know. And Gene Siskel <laughs> never laughs at anything. I know. And that he he was <laughs> doubled it over. Him. It destroyed. He was in Jackie's lap crying. <laughs> he was, it was so funny. Me, he was laughing. I know. <laughs> I saw anything like it. But that's, you know, I finally decided, like, every time Roger comes in, we must have a weigh-in. Yeah. Before he sits down to do anything. Because yeah. then he's obsessed with his weight the rest of the interview. Yeah. And I love it. 